Oh boy. I'm trying to go too fast there. You just do an end. And that is going to be our tree sap input file. I'm just going to save this out right now. Uh, you should save it out too as something, uh, somewhere you're going to find it. Uh, I'm just going to save it as a tree sap file right here. And you can just save it as a text. And that is going to be our tree sap file. So when you open up tree sap, when you bring it up, you uh, should see this window right here with lots of tabs. And you can either do file, open, or you can just click this button to open a new, uh, a new file. I'm going to select this tree sap file here. Open it up here. It'll take a second to read everything in. And then uh, to check, you kind of have to check to make sure that everything went well. There aren't really any uh, error warnings at this point. So here we see that I named my tree demo, and it's right there. Click display. It shows that we have these taxa. One, two, three, four, five, six. It got all six taxa. And we can also, if we click on this, we can see that it indeed was able to find the sequence. So that's a good thing. If any of these didn't, if it didn't work out this way, it means that there's a problem parsing your uh, input file, so just make sure you may want to go out and do that one more time. So most of these, uh, the settings aren't going to be terribly important to change, and it, it will run just fine without uh, changing any of these things. Um, maybe just a couple important ones. Uh, you can create new amino acid properties if you'd like to. Um, so maybe one thing that's important is this: the number of categories used in calculations is this number eight. Uh, this was basically going to say, um, well, TreeSap goes through and it ranks the the uh, how significant a change was on a category of one to whatever this number is, so one to eight, and that's just standard. Um, when you go, you can choose an output directory. It's basically going to create a lot of output. And then when you're ready to run, you can just uh, come to the Run tab, give it a sliding window length, probably of, uh, you don't have to set one of these, but you can give it a 15. Uh, one other thing on this, this is we could have used, if we would have had more processors, we could have changed this number. Uh, on our calculations. Also, the sliding window size, if you don't set it, it uh, defaults to the uh, the length of our sequences, and this just defaults to one anyway. And that's probably pretty good. And you can just run it. Now it'll uh, run for a little while. Sorry, that's kind of crazy. All right, and once the task is completed, uh, you can um, view the, the tree that is output uh, like this. Now, interestingly, uh, you might have to, to scale it or uh, uh, to, to be able to see it sometimes. Anyway, that um, shows the ancestral states, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and you'll, yeah, there's a lot to, to learn from this. Um, basically, it predicts where if the if we really evolve from the chimpanzee right here, it predicts the DNA of our most common or most most recent ancestor. So that's what the the, the nodes are. Anyway, uh, we don't really need that. All right, now that we've done that. Um, we can, uh, we should be able to go to our tree sap directory, our output directory. I just had it go to the default output. Open that up. And here we see my demo. And if you go into this ev pathway, 
sliding window, we have a whole file of data. Now this means different things and uh, some of it is pretty hard to understand but I'm going to try and uh, cover some of the basics. So these files contain specific information for this specific trait. So for example, bulkiness information is contained in that file. So now that we have all this information, how do we tell which one of these was really important or how do, how do we tell where there was selective pressure? We're going to move up uh, back one directory and open up this z sig prop file. Uh, it's kind of messy, so you open it with Excel and uh, you can, the contents are more easily discernible. So <clears throat> basically, this file has um, one column with the property name, uh, and then one, one column with the category. Now remember, these are the categories 1 to 8, with 8 being the most significant or most drastic change, and 1 being a smaller change. Uh, the column value represents the, it's a, it's a, it's a p-value representing the statistical significance. And these last three columns are representing the degree of statistical significance. So if it is significant at the 0.05 level, that means you have, there's only 5% chance of this happening to, due to uh, just a random chance. Again, at a 0.01 level, there's only 1 in 100 chance of this happening due to chance. The ones that we're going to be interested in are these ones, there's only one chance, or one in a thousand chance that that this, this change happened just randomly to chance. Now, in order to, to read this better, we're going to sort this. Um, we can do a custom sort on it. And if we search, sort first by the category, so we want all the column, or we want all the category eights, the most drastic changes on top. So we're going to set that largest to smallest. And then next, let's set uh, by value. And we can do that also largest to smallest. All right. So now that we have that, we have a list of the most. Um, so here is the most probable, most um, changing. I guess amino acid property. Um, and this is the uh, the long range uh -oh, non bonded energy. Which sounds pretty exciting, huh? So, uh, if we we're we're looking specifically for the ones that have asterisks in all three columns, meaning they are significant at all of these levels. Of course, if they're significant at the one one thousandth level, they're going to be significant at the others. Um, so we're going to move down. Uh, so the category eights, there are these three right here. Power to be the N terminal. And um, for the category seven. There are those right there that are significant. And then usually go down to about category 6. Uh, if you're really desperate, you go down to 5. But around 5, uh, the changes aren't so significant. And you, uh, yeah. So if you write down um, these, these are going to be the most, chain, the most changed. And you can look into these more specifically like we will do in just a second here. Now I'm just going to... Uh, choose this power to be at the end terminal, I noticed that it um, it appeared also oh, also in this up here uh, in a category 8 and in a category 6 at uh, the 1 1,000th significance level. So um, I'm going to go back to this the folder, sorry if you couldn't see that, uh, into this, into the s sliding window directory. Alright, so if we scroll down to our uh, our property, power to be at the end terminus here, we can also open this up with Excel. Uh, 